Good morning, everybody. It's Javier, and I'm super excited to be with you here this morning to share with you something that's very important as it relates to understanding that the uh, long-lasting success and power lies not just in selling of solar, but most importantly, in referrals. And so that's why what I want to talk to you about here today is going to be just a short segment. And we're also going to give you some updates as it relates to some of the equipment that has evolved to the point that we are going to start leveraging it even more, which is going to be the end phase. I'm not going to get into that too much. We're going to actually have a training on that the following Saturday so we can let everybody know. And especially, like I said, I'm here at the uh, Super Saturday event in the city of Downey with JC and everybody else from Power. It's a packed house. <clears throat> I'm actually going to go present as soon as I'm done with this webinar on getting everybody off to a fast start. And so again, really, really good stuff going on. I want to congratulate everybody for all that they are doing to have all this success really take root. And I believe in lasting success, not just simply in having a good week, a good month, or even a good year. I want it to be something that everybody can enjoy literally for as long as possible. Uh, Red, with the thumbs up, can you see the Fast Start Training PowerPoint? Cool. What I'm gonna talk to you today is about the Fast Start. I'm trying, no, what the hell am I talking about? No, that was last Saturday thing, Red. But I wanna talk to you about here today. I'm telling you, I'm losing it. Um, I, I think I need to put my glasses on or something. That's what my wife would say. But anyways, what I wanna do is let me just go ahead and bring this out, open up the most recent one and start sharing with you something that in my opinion, my opinion is really, really important. Now, before we get started on that, I do wanna remind everybody, for those who just came in right now, that we're gonna have a very important training next Saturday. And what we're going to do is talk about end phase and how they have evolved to the point that we're actually start using them more now than ever before. And so I just want to give everybody the opportunity to register for, we're not registered, but just simply be ready to attend that event. Uh, everybody that's, okay, we just let some more people in right now. And right, can you see the decipher, uh, Bill? Cool. All right, well, we're going to talk. And, and Javier, Go ahead. Uh, you keep saying end phase, it's actually Solar Edge. I'm sorry, Solar Edge. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Solar Edge. Uh, we're going to start leveraging the power of what? Solar Edge has gotten its, uh, has the point that it's evolved to, where now it's starting to make more sense because it's going to be able to draw more power from each panel. And I'll let Red take, uh, talk to you about that in just one second. But the real class is going to be uh, next Saturday. So you want to mark your calendar down because I'm telling you, this is going to be a shift. Just like we've been shifting so many things and forever, we will be shifting things to whatever makes the most sense for our customers and in the process, grow your business uh, as well. So let me go ahead and go back over here. Once last time, right, you see the cipher? Okay, so because the thing opened up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by talking about something that's near and dear to my heart, which is understanding that we are planting the seeds today so that in a year to a year and a half, after all your clients have gone through their first 12 months of being on solar, you can leverage the power of referrals. First generation clients are the most expensive and the hardest and most frustrating ones to get. If I'm prospecting door to door, if I'm prospecting, you know, at, at a swap meet or home show or whatever, man, you need a million people to come uh, prospects to finally get one client. You don't want to do that forever. So you want to make sure that you're banking on everything that we are training you on so that eventually you can live off referrals. Those are the ones that stick with you. Those are the ones that pay you the most and so on and so on. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to be like some people who I know here that have surpassed more than a year and a half going on two years of power, but a lot of the things they told their clients have not come into fruition. And therefore, all this harvest of a year to a year and a half they've been working on is wasted. And now they're back to generating first generation clients and they end up quitting. I actually have one that quit and I didn't understand why until I saw the most recent person who has more time than him getting ready to quit as well. And so here's the question I'm going to ask you, and I'm going to ask you to answer it very, very quickly. If you're not answering, then you're part of the problem, because this is exactly what I'm talking about when you need to at least learn to try. Well, first things first, I want to congratulate Mr. Michael Johnson. He was actually at an event yesterday looking sharp, as he, as he always does, in full gear, from the background to the banners to the throw from the table. I mean, what an incredible guy that's going out there and just doing everything that they can. So my recommendation to everybody is get your hands on this gear. And by, and by getting your hands on this gear, I'm not telling you that you should ask him to borrow it. Buy your own so that if you really want to go big time, that you can look professional and increase your chances of having people approach you and become successful as well. The fast start bill pickup is something that did a pop quiz with three people this week. I told them, hey, Let's do a role, a little bit of role playing. I have some time. 
Tell me, what are you going to tell me when you call me your past client, real estate, mortgages, whatever the hell you want to call it, friends, family, your neighbors? What are you going to tell me? And all three were like, uh, ooh, uh, pay, what's up? Pay, hey. We don't want to do that. We want to make sure that we're flowing. We're flowing, we're flowing. And the only way to do that is to always drill for skill. Always make sure that you have that at the tip of your tongue. And this is a fast start script that we've used forever that we're not going to read to you because you should know it. And if you don't know it, then go here and scan this, download it, and practice. So that when we do ask for people to go ahead and share with us you know, their fast, uh, their, their fast start script, they can actually sound intelligent and are working towards their stated goal here at Power. So without any further ado, don't be calling me during the week for the link for the script for anything. I showed it to you right now. And if you missed it, wait for the actual video to be uploaded to YouTube. I'm sure by now you know the link to our YouTube channel. Get it there. So let's talk about how to decipher an electric bill. Now, this is different, completely different than the one we've done in the past, where in the past, we truly do focus on breaking every single part of the bill down. Well, I'm not going to do that today because that's not what I want to share with you. What I want to share with you is what happened with two people, one of them being myself, in regards to the bill. Let me give you an example. This is actually when they showed me my proposal that was done under my uh, daughter's name when uh, we were doing this the first time. They showed me this is what your home looks like. This is how the panels will look like. This is where they will go. This is how your panel is going to be. 33 panel system, blah, 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 blah. They explained to me the whole net metering thing, if you would. And of course, that's very important for a lot of uh, different reasons. But the part that I want to get to is this. They told me, look, your first payment, the first 18 months is going to be 177. And then we're going to go ahead and take you up to 241. If you don't apply the full 30%, uh, 20, at the time it was 26% federal tax credit and so on. And so the question that I want to make sure everybody understands here, no, it's not an answer, is the fact that when you look when you look at this part of what was shown to me which is actually in the uh, previous slide is uh well here it's not advancing is the it says your new utility bill that for me showed five dollars so what i'm trying to do here I'll let, me, let me pull it up here in just one second because i really want you to see this and i'll pull up the most recent one so that you understand what it is that I'm talking about, because this is very, very, very important. I always look at what's the common denominator between people that last and go the distance versus those that don't. And this is a this plays a big role. And so I hope you know where I'm going with this. And so here's where I'm going to need you to go ahead and answer me and help me out here as well. So the question is simple. You're showing your client the proposal. And here's the part that I wanted to bring up. So here, this one shows my current utility bill, 318, 241, when I go solar. Now, the reality is that in today's environment, the 318 wouldn't be compared to 241. It might be 270 or 290 or something like that. But what I'm asking you, so how much am I going to pay? How much? And remember, here's the $5 new utility bill. I'm going to use the initial the initial payment of 177. So 177 is the initial payment. So my question to you guys is, okay, so I get it. So how much will, will I be paying a month total? That's, that's what I just need to know, how much? So who's gonna go first? How much am I gonna pay? For the first 18 months. Uh, my question is, what is an actual uh, bill? It's not five dollars. It could be twenty. Well, but, but that's my question to you guys. That's my question that I am talking as from the perspective of a client. That's my question. We don't know that. We haven't hit the future. So I'm basing off the proposal that most of us read. Well, what is my total bill going to be? Your first eighteen months should be that one seventy seven plus the, uh, um, you know, that five dollars. Or if that five dollars, if there's a, uh, um, uh, give me a number. I need a number. I need a number. Let's keep it real simple. Anybody? 182. Yeah. Okay, 182. Okay. And the 182. Reason, 182. The reason that we have to be very careful is because every utility company in America has what Edison refers to as MBCs. And so you got to be very careful because two people just this week alone, one of them that's gone, the other one's about to leave the end or power. 
his name, especially like he says, he, like, like he told me, his biggest mistake was selling to the people that trusted him, that he knew, family, clients. I go, well, that's who the hell we all might market to. That's who we all market to. And so the point that I'm making is, let me know if you can see the PowerPoint once again, where it's got the bars red. Okay, so what I'm getting at, who can tell me, now this is where we're going to zoom in specifically on Edison, but the, everybody has them. Everybody has them. But Edison is in, where my market is, Southern California, the biggest provider of power. Who can tell me what MBCs are? I'm, uh, and he, he, here's where I'm going with this, because I need you to understand that it's, again, if you're just looking for a quick sell here, there, to, fine. And then before you know it, everybody gets screwed. And before you know it, you're out of the business. That's it. But for some of us, I want to be here for a while. I want to have this kind of perpetual success and income that I'm going to explain to you right now. So, so let's go back to Michael because I'm going to pick up Michael because he he spoke up. So I get my bill this month, Michael. And so whatever the hell, I forget what number you said, but in theory, my bill from my Edison company should be what? What did you say? Keep it simple. Oh, I'm talking the 177 oh, from Edison. Yeah, so that's, fine. that's the finance. I'm making one payment out of draft. So 177 is out of draft. My question is my utility bill. My new utility bill is how much? It should be five dollars. Okay, okay, five dollars. So the point that I'm making, as it relates to this, that it's really important for you to understand. Now, with everybody, okay. So I get my bill, and I get a past due notice, right, of my utility bill. So I'm like, well, Michael, I'm supposed to get one bill a year. You said, because isn't that what they, what we tell people, right, guys? Anybody? Yes. So I. I didn't, I just disregarded yeah. it because you know what? Michael told me I'm going to get one bill a year for the 12 months, averaging out, but whatever, whatever. But here, now I'm getting a, hey, we're going to disconnect your power, Javier, because you haven't paid in not just one month, but two months now, going on three. And when I look at it, I'm like, okay, well, I had a balance of 3193 Now new charges of 4261 The first person I'm going to call the first person I'm going to call is Michael. And if I'm really anal about it, I'd probably be like, Michael, you need to pay anything above five bucks. You know, I mean, that, that's, that's what I would say. I mean, and so the point that I'm making is, how would you feel as a client if they're telling you we're about to disconnect your power because we haven't gotten your now, 74, uh, 73? Yeah. What would you say? Anybody? That means you've used more than you have, you have used more power than you have produced. I use more than I've produced. Wrong. That's not necessarily true. Because, yeah, go ahead. But we're, yeah. we're not talking about the usage. And I'll come back to that in just one second. Now, going back to the NBCs, who can tell me what the NBCs are? Come on, anybody. It's not the television channel or whatever network you want to. Any, any guesses from anybody? Anybody? The only thing I know is the basic cost associated. No, NBCs. Okay, I mean, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Um, there's a cost associated. Uh, it's like a connection. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Specifics. We're not going to start. Okay, what are NBCs? Simple answer. What's, what's, what's the, what does the letters NBC stand for? Anybody? All right. So the point, okay, that's why we're here. But I need you to participate because if you're not participating, then you know it's a waste of time for all of, all of us here. What you need to understand that every single utility company has a version, or what, or they just simply call it differently of NBCs. It varies company to company, state by state, but they're all boils down to the same thing. And here's what I want you to understand because it's going to be very, very short. Now, if I look at this, my daily average for this particular uh, month, if you notice it right there, I have the day, uh, monthly graph. But for this billing period, for uh, what was the average right there? Uh, Negative, 161, right? Yes. And so what I'm getting at is if you look at this, there are some things called non-bypassable charges or NBCs that if you are not aware of this and you are not wording this into your proposal presentations to your clients, you are setting yourself up from some very pissed off clients in the future. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. And so I just want to give you some food for thought. Now, 
Most people, if you do own a home, go look at your bill. You have them. If you don't own a home and you don't have solar, well, this is your chance to learn. Because I'm telling you right now, simple question that I'm going to ask you guys. How would you feel? I called Rhett like 10 times. Rhett, they're about to cut my damn power off because I have a bill. How do I have a bill? I don't, I don't get that. They're about to shut off my power. And so the end, at the end of the day, what you see here, what you'll notice that at the bottom are what are called NBCs or non-bypassable charges. Now, don't ask me what this stands for, the CTC and the NDC and the PPPC crap, but whatever the hell it is, they told us of 2185, period. The fixed recovery charge, the wildfire fund charge, again, there are some fees involved. So I'm not here to talk to you about how to calculate it based off of, uh, the power, because you could have used very little or no power. Some of these fees still exist. Now, like I said, for some utilities, they're a lot higher than others. We live in California, and unfortunately, under Edison, which is the, which is the ultimate cartel. I mean, they're just going to screw you for one reason. They can. That's just the way it is. When I do my presentations with my clients, I usually have my slide that shows them how they went up 11%, how they went up 9%. And my newest slide is showing them how they just submitted their paperwork for another rate increase, which they will get. And so there's no better time to sell solar. But what I'm saying, my question to you is, are you setting yourself up for failure in a year when people start getting this stuff? Or are you setting yourself up for referrals? I love referrals. It is the best way to grow exponentially your business. Because at some point, everybody will get tired of selling solar to first generation clients. It sucks. And so what I'm saying is we need to understand these things. And so what I'm sharing with you right now is the actual bill. Now. For this particular month, as you can see, $44 on this one. I paid the $44.58, $44.10 the next month. So what I'm saying is that now, like Michael said, it the right way. Five, your bill plus, plus five. And then if I'm doing the math, 44 plus the whole damn bill, then I'd be like, okay, Michael, shit, I'm going to buy back where I started. And so now this is before, this is what the low rates back then when I got it. Now imagine the new one. So all I'm giving you is food for thought so that what you want to make sure you do when I talk to my client, let me go back to how I present it and then I'm going to hand it over to Rep. So once again, if you look at this right here, I'm breaking it down that even in this month when I sent 430 kilowatt hours back to the grid, the bastard still charged me. Does that make sense, guys? Yes. So be very careful about when you say, look, if we increase the output, your new bill went from $50 a month to 25 to five. Or now, now you show five, negative $5. Remember, it's not the people that work at power that are gonna have to deal with your clients. You can't just simply look stupid and say, well, that's solo. You know, the programmer at solar lied or no, it's gonna have to be you. So again, if you look at all this stuff, the cartels are going to get you one way or the other. I just showed you how I sent 430 kilowatt hours back to the grid. They still stuck me for $44. Now, I don't call them NBCs. I refer to them as what, in my opinion, what they really are, which is junk fees. And so I lay that down when I'm talking to my clients like I never did before because I almost had my power turned off because, well, I listened to the guy that sold it to me. And he told me five bucks. So I was like, damn. And then, of course, it looked official because if you look at your proposals, it literally says, let me go back over here, new utility bill. It does say that. That is so freaking deceiving. So all I'm saying is this. Now, if I'm talking to Rhett, Rhett, right now you're paying 318. After the 18 months, your payment will adjust. The 241, if you don't apply the full 30%, which most people don't do it. So the good news is 241, 318, you're still ahead. Now, keep in mind, right, <clears throat> that you're still going to be responsible because it's during some months, you're not going to generate as much power as others. The winter, you're not going to generate as much as the, uh, as the summer. But all that negative usage just simply gets thrown to the back end of your bill. It's called net metering, and that's your settle up bill. So you have a negative balance. 
But once we start to pump some power, like right now, we are going into money making mode, okay? From now until October, all that negative balance that you owe them is going to turn the other way around. They're going to owe you because, but keep one thing in my red. You will have, you will still have a connection fee that's based upon multiple factors, especially junk fees. They won't let us get away from the junk fees. Now here it says $5. I'm telling you right now, Red, that's probably not going to be it. it. It's made up depending on your utility. It's the wildfire fund still going on. They want you to pitch in for this. They want you to pitch in for that. And so it could easily be 30. I mean, I'm paying around 30, 35 bucks a month, sometimes even more, which have to be paid every month. That is not to be confused with the negative bill that I have that I didn't produce enough. That would just get kicked down until my 12 month settlement period is up. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, and so you see that's where I'm getting with this. I hope it makes sense. Now I'm making a big deal out of it. It's not the end of the world, but I need Rhett to become an advocate of mine to help me generate referrals. And the last thing I need him to do is to be pissed like I was when they're about to disconnect my power. And when I'm talking to people from power, everybody has their two cents. Oh, it's this, it's that. Well, how the hell do you not know what it is? First of all, if you don't have solar, shut up. Because unless you have it, you're not going to tell me about the fees. Because if you really want to tell me about the fees, pay my damn bill. And so the point that I'm making is that you have to be in a position. You have to be aware. You have to be aware of these things so that, because remember, like the guy that left power this past week, and if I was him, I would have left too, because he had gone around telling people about refunds. And when you do your taxes, you're going to get a, a refund and there's a rebate. And now he's got a guy that's after him because he told me he's going to get a rebate for $7,800 and the guy ended up getting $1,200. I go, well, that's not how a tax credit works. And so there's a lot of misinformation. And that's exactly where solar salespeople get the reputation that is just too common. Does that make sense? And so I'm just telling you that if you have not had it, first of all, if you don't have it yourself, be very careful because you're probably one of these people that just reads like a script. Here, your new bill's five bucks. Let me ask you a question. Would you rather pay 318 or would you rather pay the 241 plus the five? That's 246. That's a steal. And then I get my disconnection notice and that's not cool. And so what I'm saying is you have to understand this, especially be very careful if you're not a client of the solar system with power or anywhere else because of the fact that yes, there is, and don't confuse the two. Now, I'm going into Edison's right now. Let me see which one is here. Let me move this up out of the way. And I don't know why, but it makes you log in twice. Bam, then it kicks you out. There you go again. But the point that I'm making, no, what you're doing and what most people are doing is they are confusing. They are confusing the difference. So here, I'm in month number nine of 12. As of right now, I owe Edison 386 bucks, but I don't care because we are going into money-making mode with the sun right now. And we are going to wipe that thing out between now and by the time my 12 months are here in just three short months, I'll take care of that. But the bill comes in every single month. You don't want to take on that cost. So for me, that's why number one, I always record all my, all my presentations. I always record them. And I can easily say, well, Adebayo, remember how when I would present, I'll even send you the link Adebayo to the video. When I was explaining to you that we can help you with a lot of things, but we cannot help you with the junk fees. Edison loves money, just like so many other utility companies. And so therefore, they figured it out. They're going to get the money or some money one way or the other, because you don't want to have a conversation that this guy's having with this client. Like he said the other day, he told me point blank. And, and I'm saying this with a lot of love, because first of all, you know, he shared it with me and he says, man, I'm just so glad that one of my clients finally called me and didn't call me a motherfucker. You know? I'm like, what? What do you mean? Because yeah, that's what they told me. Because the fees, that this, the rebates, all this other stuff that are, and now you're out of the business. And that's why, unfortunately, most people don't go the distance. And that's what I'm trying to help you avoid, if you would, as it relates to that. And that's exactly why it, you have to become familiar with the actual NVCs because they have nothing to do with how much you generated, how much you used more or less or any of that stuff. It's just a fact of life that even if you pump in negative kilowatts, it's just simply not based on that. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand it over to, first of all, any questions from anybody about anything we just described? Anybody? 
Hey, Javier. So, um, so since I'm selling from Texas to California, I wasn't familiar with the uh, NBCs. Uh, you know, we have the uh, the base charge and the TDU down here in Texas. But uh, um, so your your credits that you guys get uh, from Solar will they can they will they count towards the NB non bypassable? Okay, so always going to be. In other possible. words, you're saying you're not going to get around our screwing us, screwing you. You know what I mean? Okay, okay. That's what that's it's horrible in California. That's what that's I want to care about. Man. Yeah. Okay. So, but that's what I'm saying to just simply be aware of that because I am more concerned about the people's ability to do business in a year, year and a half when their clients go through the full cycle. That let me tell you something, buddy. They are not going to be referring anybody to you when they feel they got screwed. And the, and the worst thing of a person of trust, like meaning an advisor, my life insurance agent, or my solar person. The worst thing they can ever do is say, I didn't know, or that's what they told me. That's what my own company. Well, guess what? Your company sucks. And so we have to own it. And so that's what I'm saying. We are doing several things. And that's the beauty of being in this business as long. I've only been, been here 15. Right. How long have we been in the business? 16 months? Or what is it? I don't have a clue. Yeah. 15, 15 months. 15 months. We've been in business 15 months. I'm learning, guys. And so the whole purpose of these Saturday webinars is to share with you what I learned. People call me during the week all the time. And what I tell them is, look, listen, don't call me. I don't need a friend. I don't need to chat. I don't need to, you know, I, I don't need that. Leave me alone. But Saturday mornings, 10 a.m. We can talk all you want. Other than that, don't call me. Leave me alone. The only exception is if I'm going to mentor you on a deal, then upload the lead, tag me. And then after I get tagged, I'll contact you. And so because a lot of people, like I said, just like, like to waste a lot of time and they love to do it with somebody else. And so I'm not that at somebody else. So Great, great question, and I hope that helps you because if you're selling in California, be aware. And everybody calls them different things, but they are non-bypassable, meaning that you're gonna you're gonna get stuck with them. I was very disappointed to be honest with you. I was pissed. I was very pissed when they almost shut my power down because I'm like, wait, my my payment is on auto pay, right? My annual one is on auto pay. What's the problem? These bills they're sending me, I'm not paying them because they told me not to pay to the end of the year, right? Oh, that's just different. These are the we like to screw your fees, and so please, we do need those every month. And you have to do that. Uh, any questions from anybody else about anything that I've just covered? All right. If no one has any other questions, what I'm going to do is hand it over to Red just to give you a little bit of a teaser as to some of the things that have evolved. You know, things will always change. We went from using Mosaic, then they figured, no, we're a good leap. And so every week we need to find out what's the flavor of the week because things change. So don't be that one person that calls me or whines, hey, I thought we were using Mosaic. I thought we were, listen, you're just behind with the times. And that's because you're not plugging in. And we're about to have a major shift real soon in regards to the inverters that we use. You know, we've been talking about nothing but uh, end phase forever in a day. And Brett's going to tell you something else. We've also have been not using leases or the PPAs, guess what we're doing next week as well? We're going to get everybody up to speed on why PPAs and leases make a lot of sense for certain people, of course, not for everybody. Your job is to just go with the flow. And if you're one of these people that can't have, oh my God, my brain's, but you know, listen, listen, you got to stay with the time so that you can, you know, bring value to your clients. And if you have a hard time doing that, well, maybe this isn't for you. So without any further ado, I really hope you join us next Saturday. 10 a.m. and get your team. If you have a team, get them all involved. I know we have a lot of people here in Downey right now, but for everybody else, move, mobilize your team. That's one of the skills that I'm telling you will help you become successful and profitable long-term. One skill I learned, and I'm not tooting my own horn, but I'm just telling you because I do it every day, is I learn how to mobilize people. And when you understand how to mobilize people to an event, to a webinar, to whatever, Life gets a lot easier and business gets easier and profitable as well. So, Red, sir, thank you so much for being here. It's all yours. Thanks, Javier. Good morning, everybody. And as always, Javier, great information. You know, it, it really is important. What, what Javier is talking about is setting proper expectations. You know, if if when you're talking to somebody, if you let them know what they what to expect, so it's not, you know, what, what Javier said, you know, when, when he's like, you know, all pissed off about his bill, that's because he had different expectations. Had he been set up properly with the proper expectations that say, hey, you're going to have some extra charges in here. Um, you know, we don't know exactly what they're going to be, but, uh, you, you know, you can, you can look at somewhere between 25 to 40 bucks a month. Um, you know, then it's then they don't get upset. OK, because they know about it up front. They've agreed to it. They and, and they're ready to move forward. So it's about setting proper expectations. And that's something we need to do. And unfortunately, the problem is that our pre, our, our proposal, the solo proposal, 
Now understand that has nothing to do with power. Solo is used by everybody. I mean, a lot of different companies use Solo. And we have some power as far as um, what, you know, telling, you know, we ask them to do certain things and and, and fix certain things. But uh, as far as to change their present, their proposal uh, numbers and how it all works, we can't get them to do that. And unfortunately, what happens is when the more energy you create, the bigger the offset, the smaller that bill shows. Because what it does is it credits, it takes some of that credit and puts it towards that bill, which is not true. It's true in the sense that people are getting extra credit. So their net effective um, at the end of the year is going to be lower. But it's not true that it's going to go towards those non-bypassable charges or those junk fees. Um, you know, it, it, any way you look at it, in fact, if you start off in your proposal at 100%, you're going to be closer to the real number. Um, but since we're always selling people with an offset of 110, 120, 130%, um, that, that bill sometimes will actually, or that new utility bill section will actually show a negative number. Uh, make sure people understand the credit, extra credit that you're getting from the offset can never go towards your junk fees, okay? The junk fees are going to be what the junk fees are. The interconnection agreement fee may only be a few dollars, but all, all total, it's probably going to be somewhere between 30 and 40 bucks. Um, so we need to make sure people know that and they understand that. And as long as we're explaining that and setting proper expectations, um, I think, uh, you know, for the most part, we'll be fine. And at the end of the day, here's the thing. We really have to start selling people on the idea that um, uh, this is a benefit over time, meaning, you know, we're no longer telling people we're going to slash their electricity bill. We're telling them that we can lock in their utility cost and save them a couple thousand dollars a year over the next 25 years, which is true. Um, but a lot of that that savings is going to be coming, you know, four, five, six, 15 years into the future. It's not today necessarily. Today, it may be a sideways move. And as we as we migrate into the new our new reality of NEM 3.0, uh, it's even more so because of the fact that we're going to be um, our, our numbers are going to go up in regards to what we have to finance because we're financing um, the batteries, okay? And those batteries are expensive, okay? Um, so our world is evolving. Um, solar is evolving. The, the financing has evolved. Uh, and part of what Javier was talking about is next week, we're going to talk a little bit about um, uh, solar edge and uh, not just their inverters, uh, but the batteries, you know, um, we don't believe in string inverters, right? Well, solar edges is, is not technically a string inverter. It's a hybrid. So we're going to be talking about that next week, exactly how solar edge works and why it's important um, that we have that in our arsenal. Because as we migrate into battery uh, selling batteries, um, oftentimes uh, it's going to be a better um situation to sell the solar edge product um, inverter and battery uh, rather than sell the end phase so there's a there's a space uh, for both of them we need to make sure we understand that the other thing is we're going to talk about um, you know I did um, I actually converted three purchases um, into um, leases and PPAs this week uh, and it was an amazing difference. You know, one of the things that we're going to be adding into our pre-discovery call, which we have not been doing up until now, uh, is finding out what's what's important to people. Because I had um, three people this week who didn't really have tax liability. Two of them were retired. The other one was self-employed and basically wrote everything off. So when it comes to looking at the purchase, the big deal. The big benefit of a purchase is the tax um, credit. You know, you're getting in some cases twelve, fifteen thousand dollars in tax credit 
which is a really big deal if you've got a tax liability. Now, you should all write this down. If you want to, to when you're talking to clients, if they want to know where that tax credit gets applied to, it's line 24 of their tax return. So in 21 uh, and 20, uh, 2020 and 2021, it's line 24. So if they look at line 24 for their 21 tax returns, they probably haven't done 22 yet. I'm not sure what line it is in 22 yet, to be honest with you. But at least in, in 2021, it's line 24. Now, they don't have to use it all in one year. They can spread that out over five years. But if they're getting a $15,000 tax credit and they're only spending or only covering you know, twelve, fifteen hundred dollars a year in tax liability, line twenty-four. Then that's not as big of a benefit. Whereas we can go in, <clears throat> we can go in on a on a lease or a PPA, and drop the payment. So, for instance, here's here's a here's a sample. I had one. The payment was going to be a hundred and seventy-nine dollars. Um, I'm sorry, one hundred and eighty-five dollars during the first eighteen months. 185 and it was going to 295 from 19 to 300 okay and i was able to go in with a with a lease at $172 a month so huge difference right i mean lower than what their first 18 months payment would be and they don't have to worry about it, you know putting in any any extra money or anything else and the payment only goes up about $5 a month every year so the benefit there was huge to them and they jumped right on it. I mean, in each case, it was like, a, it was such an easier sale to go that way. So um, it's important that you, you plug into these trainings and I don't mean just Saturday. If, you know, if, if you don't have a full-time job and you're not checking out power calendar on a daily basis, there's so much stuff in there. Uh, in fact, I'm going to share my count, my screen right now. And just show you this. I want to show you a couple of things. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. Okay, so here's the calendar. This is for February. Look at how full this is. I mean, it's there's just so much stuff on here, and there's so many good things on here that you can uh, that you can plug into. Um, you know, the Solar Edge training, the workshops for leases and and PPAs on Wednesday. There's just a lot of a lot of different things. The other thing I want to do is I want to shout out, and I think he may be uh, already over there with Downey speaking. But um, you know, Javier, uh, I don't know if if any of you plug into the Power Hour on Monday at 5 p.m. Uh, this goes out to the entire company, and um, Javier was actually a guest speaker this last Monday. And I got to tell you, in fact, I was I had a meeting with Michael, uh, Dr. Mike this morning, and I was telling him about it. It was absolutely the best power hour I've ever seen. Um, it was really, really good. In fact, I want to um, I'm going to put the link. I just put the link in chat. OK, um, if you I mean, take the time. The first 35 minutes is a uh, business presentation that is the best. I mean, Javier and I were, were talking about it afterwards. This girl, Riza, she is amazing, okay? She did the best business opportunity presentation we've ever seen. It was so good. In fact, uh, part of my meeting, uh, the main purpose for my meeting with Dr. Mike this morning was to uh, create a webinar that we can plug into our uh, platform um, that utilizes this new uh, opportunity presentation because uh, it, it, it doesn't get any better than what she did. And the question and answer session um, after that with Rob and Javier was phenomenal. I mean, Javier did such a great job. Um, just shouts, shout out to him. Um, he really represented uh, on Monday night, I mean, to the entire company, um, how great of a leader he is and just uh, um, why he's where he's at. I mean, you know, like I said, you know, we talked about this last week at the um, Fast Start School. He's got over 400 people on his team right now. And uh, he, he is where the rest of us want to be. Right. And so 
what um, we're going to we're uh, what Dr. Mike's going to work on for us uh, is um, for those of you who are are on the paid version, not the free version, but the paid version of widgets marketing for our um, our um, CRM platform. If you're on the paid version, he can, he'll be able to drop this right into your location. And I'm telling you, it is going to be um, a, a a a real benefit to you. Um, and if you're trying to build a team, if you're trying to build a team, um, it's going to be set up to where you can send this out um, to uh, anybody you're looking to recruit. You can email it, you can text it, whatever the case may be, and they will go to this. It'll be an on-demand, 24-hour, 24/7 on-demand webinar that they can go in, watch the um, watch the business opportunity presentation, immediately go into a a, um, a calendar to set an appointment with you, or just to sign up. Whatever the case may be, I mean, it's it's going to be very powerful. Uh, for building your team. So uh, if you're if you haven't signed up yet for the uh, the free version, at least get signed up for the free version. Uh, and and uh, Michael, I'm gonna uh, if you've got your um, flow codes, I'm gonna um, uh, set it up to where you can share your screen so that we can um, uh, give everybody that. But if you want to get involved and get some of these other, you know, we've got uh, you know several different funnels that we're working on automations, uh, workflows that you can plug right into your CRM. And um, uh, whatever we whatever we design uh, the, for Javier and I, um, Dr. Mike can actually drop that right into your location if you're part of the um, if you're part of the uh, um, paid version. So the basic version, uh, the free version that's open to everybody, is he just put in the in the chat? Okay, so um, uh, that's that's already there. Once you sign up there, you have the opportunity to just to upgrade. Um, and um, what you will find is he's very open to um, any help that he can do for you. There's um, uh, uh, training videos. There's what you know, whatever you need. We want to help you succeed. And we want to help you build your team. You build your team, it helps us build our team. Okay, so we all, it's its a win-win situation. And we really, I mean, it's its so important. So this is on the on the building side, but it's so important that you guys plug into these, um, these trainings that we do on Saturday, the trainings that the power count, you know, powercalendar.com. Um, just go there. You can, you can actually import it into your calendar system, whether it's Google or iCal or whatever the case may be, so you don't miss anything. Uh, but there's so many good things in there. Um, the um, uh, We are getting ready and, and gearing up for um, convention. Convention is May, uh, I'm sorry, March 3rd and 4th. Um, right here, I, I think we've got, uh, I don't know if it's on here yet, but March 3rd and 4th, it's a... Um, Friday and Saturday, all day, all virtual, free to anybody that wants to wants to attend. And I will tell you, there's going to be a ton of new stuff there. Uh, Leadership Summit last month, when we were there, there were 150, the top 150 guys or guys and gals were in San Diego. And it was all about tell us what we need to do to make the platform better, to make the everything better about power. And we spent the weekend doing that. And there, the the plan is all, most of the stuff that we came up with during Leadership Summit is going to get introduced next uh, next virtual conference, the the um, uh, um, Power Conference on March third and fourth. So um, you need to attend if you if uh, if you're if you're available, whatever you can plug into. Maybe you can't be there all day uh, for the two days, but whatever you can plug into. Make sure you're checking the calendar. Check the calendars for the the various trainings. Like I said, there's there's all kinds of of training, and the new knowledge base is phenomenal. I mean, it, it's it, there is so much good stuff in knowledge base that um, they've uh, and, and they keep they keep adding stuff all the time. Uh, you know, whether you're looking to sell in a new state, um, they've got all kinds of of spotlight they've got a spotlight section for each and every state as far as 
um, the SREX and and all the different uh, advantages and disadvantages and requirements depending upon what you're doing. You know, um, only Connecticut and California, I believe, at this point require a license, um, but there are some guidelines in regards to door to doors and stuff like that. But it it shows in knowledge base it has all of that stuff, and if you have a question regarding solar edge or end phase or q cells or rex or whatever it is you can go in put it into the uh in, into the search bar and knowledge base and i'll bet there's something in there about it because uh they've done a really really good job um and so you know at at, at the end of the day expectations make sure you're setting proper expectations get involved in the training Take a look at what I just put in the chat in regards to check out Power Hour. I'm telling you, I, I mean, it was it, it was not just an exciting presentation. It it helped. I mean, it kind of rebooted me, to be honest with you. I, I I mean, I was excited myself, and and I know I know everything about how this how the company works in, in regards to building a team, and and just how we get paid and all of those things, and yet I was still refreshed um and uh I, you know i'm i've got a um you know between the the uh, being able to offer now the leases and the ppas and all the different things gearing up for nem 3.0 um where i was going into it thinking you know um you know it, this is going to be really really difficult which it is it's going to be much more difficult than it was but it's not going to be as difficult as i thought because we've got so many other options that are coming into the into focus now um, maybe they were there before, but we weren't really focused on them because we had it easy here in California. You know, when I was at Leadership Summit, it was funny because um, um, we have uh, such an advantage here um, or disadvantage, depending upon how you look at it, in that our utility costs are crazy. You know, I mean, even even in Texas, Dr. Mike uh, what's the average KP, uh, K, KWH cost? What's the average kilowatt per hour cost that you're up against out there in Texas? So the PPAs are not new to Texas. <laughs> so, um, you know, a, a year ago, it was like 10 cents, you know, uh, now it's like 17 to 21. And so, you know, and some, so that's why when Javier is saying, sometimes it's a lateral move, it's, it's always been a lateral move in Texas. <laughs> and so, um, you know, and, and then depending on the, the type of power user, just because of the way the houses and the roofs are down here, some of them are, are, are bigger. And, um, but, but yeah, trying to compete in a 17 cent uh, uh, per kilowatt is tough, you know? <laughs> and so versus uh, California, you know, but it was like 20, 30 plus. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. And, you know, so doing a 17 cent uh, proposal, I mean, you look like a hero over there. <laughs> so, Yeah. And, and that's the, that was the, what I found when I was sitting at dinner uh, one night, I had two guys from Texas, two guys from Florida and a guy from Michigan. And we were going around the table talking about this and I was the last guy. Right. And everybody was talking about, you know, 12 cents, 14 cents, 16 cents, um, you know, and, and, you know, Texas, like like Dr. Mike was saying, a year ago was at ten cents. They've de they've had some deregulation, so their their costs have gone up a bit. But you know, Texas up until four months ago was the top state in the country for power. Okay, so the fact that they are able to do it, competing where they're competing, <clears throat> you know, we just we just had it really easy. You know. We were, but and it's going to be a little bit tougher now, but we're still going to be able to compete. We're still going to be able to go out there and help a lot of people, you know, so just, you know, plug into all these different things. The more you know, the more confident you're going to be and the more you're going to sell. And at the end of the day, uh, that's what it's all about, being able to show people why it makes sense to get rid of their, you know, their their dirty technology, if you will, go green and long term lock in their utility rates for basically the rest of their life i mean for most people um you know they um uh they're going to be there for a while and you're going to lock that in um their utility rate to where they don't have to worry about it ever changing and you know i'm telling you guys the the you know when you're comparing 
when you're comparing um, uh, how the utility company, in fact, I was showing somebody, I actually got a, uh, an email uh, about a month ago from Sunrun um, telling me that they're expecting Southern California Edison to go up 20% this year. And this is the email that Sunrun's sending out to everybody. So if if they're telling everybody and that, I mean, they're, they're one of the biggest companies out there telling people in an email, in writing, that Southern California Edison is expected to go up 20% this year. Solo only calculates in a maximum of 6% per year. I think I was telling everybody um, uh, last week at the um, uh, Fast Start School, do you know when you change from a 6% to a 9% escalation factor? I was showing I had a $310 payment at 25 years. It was um, uh, 1300 and some dollars, okay, at 6%. When I took it to 9%, it was $2,600. It literally doubles going from a 6% annual inflation um, uh, rate to a 9% annual, um, not inflation, escalation rate. That's a huge difference. And it means that the money we're saving them over a 25 year period may, you know, it may show in solo that it's 110 or 120 or $130,000 in fact, is almost double that over the next 25 years. And when I'm actually talking to people and trying and, and uh, working on getting them to send me their bill, I'm not talking about slashing your bill anymore. I'm talking about, would you be interested in talking to me for 20 minutes if I could show you how to lock in your utility costs for the next 25 years and save you approximately $2,000 a year doing it? So over the next 20 years, we'll save you at least $50,000. Would that be worth 20 minutes of your time? If it's not, move on, right? And then you're telling them 50,000 and the solo proposal comes out at 110 or 120. You go back to, now remember when we started this, I asked you if, if, if I could show you how to save 50,000 over the next 25 years. I'm not saving you 50,000. Forget about the monthly payment. It's not about the monthly payment. I'm not saving you 50,000 over the next 25 years. I'm going to save you double that and maybe even quadruple that or more based upon if you and I both agree that Southern California Edison is probably going to be much higher than a 6% escalation, right? What else? I mean, does it make any sense to stick with a utility company that has total control and is going to continue to go up every year? Or do you want to lock in that utility cost? And it makes such an easier close than when you're just trying to compete against a monthly bill. Monthly bill, the, the, the competition between what you're paying now, what you will be paying, yes, that is important, okay? But you, you've got to get people thinking about the cost of money over time because it really is all about that. And we can save people so much money, lock in their rate, and and do good for the environment, do good for our for them, do good for our family. So that's what it's all about. All right, real quick, we got a couple minutes left. Um, anybody have anything they any questions, any comments, any concerns, anything? Unmute yourself, let me know, put it out there, and let's see. Uh let's let's give I'll give you a couple seconds here to let me know. Everybody still out there? <laughs> All right. If nobody has this is Hector. Yeah. Hey, Hector. Hey, um, I'm just wondering uh, when we submit our the the electricity bills uh, for proposals, um, should why why are they not including that um, the the MBCs to 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 the you know to the proposal when when we receive it back? Because Solo doesn't do it. There's nothing we can do about that. Yeah, we have no control over Solo. Um, how they they um, how they put together their proposal. So there's no way for us to calculate that. And every utility company is different. Um, Southern California Edison is is you know they've got depending upon your usage, um, it could be as low as you know ten, twelve, fifteen bucks. Could be as high as forty five dollars. Um, I know in the Sonova lease and, and PPA proposal, 
um, Sonova automatically calculates um, the NBCs and the um, interconnection agreement fee at 45 bucks. That's just their average. Um, so, and, and they tell people that, that uh, um, we have no control over what the utility company is going to, the extra fees are going to charge because those fees change also, like Javier was saying. Sometimes you have the, um, um, uh, there's a some kind of a fire um, add on uh, for forest fires and different things. So there's no way for us to control that, and we're no there's no way Solo is going to add that in. They're just not going to do it. Oh, okay. Just wondering what power is in what twenty something states, and so that's that's yeah. why there's so so and, and literally there. hundreds of different utility companies. Right. right. Yeah. So anything else? Anybody got anything? Okay. Have a great week. Um, let's go out and, and, uh, I know we've got a lot of, um, I have several, uh, open presentations right now, uh, open proposals rather that we're putting together presentations, uh, appointments for, and, um, it, you know, get, get a piece of this because, um, the next, uh, 30 days, 40 days, let's say 30 days, we have, we have about a month to make sure that we get everything, everything in and still able to, get it grandfathered into uh 2.0 um after that it's going to be a little bit a uh, little bit iffy so um let's get everybody in try and get everybody grandfathered into net metering 2.0 um before things start going up have a great week thanks for showing up guys we'll we will talk to you next week